Welcome to PIC Microcontroller Part 1. In this lecture we'll go through embedded systems, the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. We'll go through a bit of the device that we're using, which is actually the PIC18 family. So that includes the memory, the specific registers, the ports, and we'll finalize it with the instruction sets for assembly and the equivalent in C. Embedded systems are used in our everyday lives. A few key examples are photocopies, washing machines, and specifically your fridge. So as you can see, your fridge has an embedded computer in there which actually reads the temperature of your fridge and uh, reads also what's required. And then it controls the compressor to cool down or heat up your fridge. A computer is an example of an embedded system which has a program that runs, it stores and restores data from its memory, and it calculates things in the central processing unit. Now there are generally two types of memory with a computer. So you have volatile memory, or known as remote access memory, or RAM, and that loses its data without any power. And then you have non-volatile memory, which is called usually called program memory, and that retains data even without power. And in your general home computer, that would be your hard disk or so your solid state drives, which are non-volatile, and then your RAM, which is your volatile memory. Microprocessor is a CPU in a single integrated chip. It does not have peripheral devices like memory and input-output devices. In contrast to that, microcontrollers are basically a whole computer on a small chip. So it, it does include these input-outputs. It has RAM, ROM, and counters and a clock circuit. The difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller is where its peripheral devices are. As you can see on the figure on your right, a microcontroller has all its peripheral devices and CPU contained within one single chip, while the microprocessor system has all its peripheral devices connected elsewhere and connected together uh, through a common board. So in our case, it would be the motherboard. Now, generally, microcontroller programs do run quicker and more compact than microprocessor tasks. However, uh, it, the disadvantage is that it does take a bit more effort to write code for microprocessors due to its instruction set. This, however, can also be overcome if you use high-level languages such as C. So similar to building a computer, when you're programming for a microcontroller, you're really interacting directly with the hardware. So in a microcontroller, that space matters. So there are hardware limitations on the memory. And that means you need to be very clever when you start writing code to uh, implement a specific application. Now, when you're choosing a microcontrollers, there's a trade-off that you have to look at between the hardware limitations and the complexity of and the cleverness of the codes and algorithms that you implement. And again, that depends on each application. So it really is up to you to decide whether or not you should go one path or the other based on one your experience as well as what you're trying to achieve. PIC stands for Peripheral Interface Controller and it's based on the Harvard architecture. There are two main types of computer architectures, so the Harvard architecture and the Princeton or von Neumann architectures. So if you want to find out more about those architectures and the subtle differences between the two, feel free to do that on your own. Microcontrollers are great because they're high performance for a low cost. Since everything is embedded into one integrated chip, it's really quick and easy to manufacture. And for their implementation, the benefit to cost ratio is very high. However, they do have hardware limitations. And they have this concept called a hardware stack. So in microcontrollers, you're allowed to go eight levels deep. And if you go over eight levels, you reach a status quo called stack overflow. Now this means that when there are, uh, when the ninth stack is added into the hardware stack, the microcontroller actually forgets about the first stack, which means your program will never finish or it will get stuck between the second and the ninth level and actually ignore the first level, which might be your main. Now they're also very powerful because they have all these peripheral devices in there. So these are like your analog digital converters, the serial ports, the digital I.O. ports, timers, and even more. 
So what we want to do is have our program, which is a list of instructions, which we want our microcontrollers to execute. Now, in order for that to happen, the microcontroller actually needs to move specific instructions into the appropriate registers. Now, in those registers, you have combinational and sequential circuits, which have been hardwired so that the instruction can be decoded and run through that system to do some calculation or switch something on or off. Now, these rely on the clock cycles to, uh, to cycle through these fetching and execution of the instructions. But we can speed that up by parallel, parallelizing this, these two operations. So since they're using different parts of your microcontroller, you can actually fetch and execute an instruction at the same time. So if you can see on the screen over here, you can see that the fetch cycle happens at the same time as the execution cycle. Now, this means that whilst we're executing one instruction, we're already fetching the next set of instructions. And that way, we are taking effectively one cycle to execute an instruction. Now, the only exception to this one cycle is when things branch out. So in this example, you can see that we still have the parallelizing. So we have the fetch occurring at the same time as the execution. However, we are fetching the go to new address instruction. So this is what we call it as branching, where we tell it to go to a new address. Now, in this case, we change the program counter to the new address, and that ignores the fetch instruction at that same time. So that's why in branching, it takes two cycles to branch. Now here's just an example of pipelining using uh, the assembly language, which is the default native language used for the PIC. So say we want to move this value 55 hex. So we have cycle zero that fetches it and then executes it. Whilst it's executing it, the port B register is being fetched. So as you can see, in each cycle, we are fetching and executing at the same time. 